I'm humbled. Brother Brad got up here talking about looking for preaching. I was looking for the preacher to preach, wondering who it was going to be because I wanted to hear it too. Uh, and uh, I, I need it. Uh, I'm, just, uh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace, praise God. And the uh, Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. And uh, so uh, uh, there's more to that, although... Uh, that I believe that that can help us. I like it over there in Revelation chapter number 12, I believe it is. There's a verse there that is long spoken to me. Much of that I cannot explain. But there's a verse there that says in verse number 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. We understand that part. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. And uh, I read that. Of course, we know about the blood of the Lamb, and not that we know everything about it, but we know some. But it says the word of their testimony. I, I like it. it yeah, I, well, I, I appreciate you singing that, or you call it every hour. I want some the stillness. That just lights my fire because my mind goes uh, to that night. Praise God that God saved me. And, uh, and I love to hear people's testimonies when God saved them. How, I, I mean, you, I, I, some people I know I could tell you their testimony, but I still want to hear them tell it. And, uh, and so uh, I, I like that, that testimony is of faith. But I also have found that there's some people's testimony I can't hear because they're dead and gone, but I can read it. And I, and I like that because he says that they were singing that song a while ago. And I appreciate there's, uh, you know, I'm thinking the angel standing at attention. I've been in the military, that attention, that there's a whole lot there. And uh, we won't say, go on that. Uh, but when the devil realized in that song what he got, I began to think about what he's done to me and my family. Yeah. And I've never felt quite like I felt at that moment about there's coming a day that he will get his justice. Right. And what he has done and what he has done to us will be over. But right here and now, there's still a battle going on and it says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. That testimony includes what you've seen, what God's done for you, how He saved you, but it includes what you've seen in other people's lives, and it includes what we've learned from those who have gone before us. And that helps me. I, I think about those, but I also read in that verse, and they love not their lives unto the death. And you read about the martyrs and how they gave their lives. And he asked me to tell you Baptist history. And, and um, you know, if I start on that and don't, don't choose a stopping point, we may be here till Sunday. Uh, but uh, uh, I like it. It has helped me so much. Uh, I've got a, a relative who's a, another group that claims to be Christian. And one day he came by and he said, oh, I saw this old church. And I said, where? He said, we went up this road. We went up by Denton going up toward High Point. And, and I saw, I said, oh, you went by Jersey Church. Yeah, that was the name of it. And I started talking to him about Jersey Church. And he has never brought up any Baptist history to me again. Uh, and that's been some years ago. Uh, so anyway, I, I like it. There was a time back in the 1600s that folks began to come across the ocean and settle in this land uh, on the East Coast. And of course, the Massachusetts Bay Colony is one of the well-known. And, and people look at that. And my, you need to understand some things. Uh, you'll talk to some of the uh, right-wing crowd today, and that is a pinnacle in their lives, the Massachusetts Bay Colony. They want to talk about the city on the hill and, 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 and Governor Endicott and, uh, and those other guys there and how great they were and how they came here and did all this. But, you know, as that thing was getting kicked off, there was a fellow showed up on a ship and uh, he was a doctor. And not only was he a doctor, but according to Shackelford's Compendium of Baptist History, he was an ordained Anabaptist preacher. Now that's important. He didn't just show up and start preaching. He was an ordained Anabaptist preacher. And so he showed up there, and when he got there, there was some God was already working. And they were having some something going on known as the antinomian controversy. And I probably didn't say that word quite right. That's one of the big words that I have to go look up. And so uh, that means lawless. 
And what they were doing, now, now you got to get your mindset. When you read the Word of God, we have to get our mindset into it because I will take and read it in the wrong way when I'm not reading who's been talking to and who's talking, et cetera, et cetera. But so you back up to the 1600s, and, and, and you know, how many of you just kind of like the King James Bible? Amen. Do you remember when they first printed it? When was the King James Bible published? 1611. I'm talking about the 1600s. Printing has not existed long. Catholicism that controlled the known world had it against the law for a common man to read the Bible if he knew how to read. You couldn't even have a copy. But now we're printing King James Bibles and people are getting them in their homes. Most homes didn't have much in the way of books. Usually they had a Bible and maybe one other book. Uh, but they, they had these Bibles and now the common man in this new colony is reading this book. And they begin to get together on Sunday and begin to talk and begin to go, are we saved by keeping the law or saved by grace through faith? And they were debating this thing in homes. And it was known as the antinomian controversy. And this doctor showed up. His name was John Clark. Amen. And John Clark showed up in the middle of that, and he got involved in it, and he picked up pretty quick that them old black hats, that was those that the Reformed right-wing crowd were lift up and tell you these great people. You see, when you showed up at Massachusetts Bay Colony, you had so many uh, uh, days, weeks, to join one of their Anglican churches. You had so many, so many days or weeks, and I can't remember exactly, if you had a newborn child to have them christened in that church. Uh, that was the law of the land. People were, who disobeyed the law were disembarred. Disembarred means that they... I'm sorry? Sprinkling. Yeah, they had to sprinkle the baby, you know. Uh, it's called a, a, a infant baptism or, or a, a pedio baptism, uh, and so uh, they uh, they. Um, good question. Now I got to get my mind back on track there. Uh, that's good. But anyway, so John Clark is just going on uh, there in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and he begins to see that they're not going to be receptive. Those that are in charge are not going to be receptive to his doctrine. As a matter of fact, by this time, there was a fellow by the name Roger Williams. He had already been banished. Right. In other words, what they did, hang on now, what they did was they kicked him out of the colony. Now, understand something. What was going on in the colonial days was you had representatives from the European nations. They showed up on the beach shore. They took a flag and planted it there, and they claimed that land for their king. Right. It didn't matter what any Native American that was living there said. They claimed that land for the king. That means they stole it. Yeah, they yeah. did. That's right. I'm telling you the truth. They stole it. That's right. All right. And so, so these Native Americans weren't their buddies. Amen. All right. So when when they banished somebody, they kicked them out of the colony, and this was wild frontier land. So they kicked them out to the wild animals, and the Native Americans in the New England winter, but before they kicked them out, they disarmed them. They took their weapons. So it was really a death sentence. Roger Williams was banished. Now Roger Williams went down from Massachusetts to Rhode Island, and Roger Williams bought land from the Native Americans. By the way, do we steal or do we pay for it? And so what happened is John Clark, he had some folks there that was listening and, and he realized that this one, they had already kicked Roger Williams, out, Roger Williams out and they was after some more. And so his group, they got on a boat and they went south to Rhode Island. And they met up with Roger Williams and he introduced them to some Indians that were his buddies because he paid them for their stuff. And they bought land from the Indians and established a colony there and established the first Baptist church in America. Amen. 
and Roger, uh, John Clark was the first pastor. There's many directions we could go on that. We could deal with Roger Williams, and he also was involved in starting a church. He wasn't in it, but just a couple months, uh, and he came and he had said then that it was wrong. There's some uh, so many things that we want to talk about. I'm honored to be here, and I I, I, I don't want to get off track. So let's just say this: they started there. Well, there was a fellow that John Clark met in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and he ended up coming down there with them. Because he heard the gospel, was saved, and was baptized, and was called to preach. And, uh, and so uh, there were some folks that were still in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Uh, William Witter was one of them. He was an older man. And he couldn't move down south with them to Rhode Island. And so he wrote a letter down there to, uh, can you imagine? I mean, I hope y'all like coming to church. And I hope, uh, uh, you know, you like preaching. Uh, I, I do. I, I like it. Can you imagine if if your preacher and most of your church had to leave and you couldn't go? Well, that was William Witter. And he wrote a letter going, can, can y'all just come up here maybe and, and preach to me a little bit? And I'm paraphrasing it, you understand? And so, and so John Clark and John Crandall and Obadiah Holmes went up to Lynn, Massachusetts, which is just outside of Boston. And they went into Mr. Witter's home. He was a member of the church, so he lived a long ways off. And they went in there. And by the way, John Clark got up to preach on Sunday morning in the home. His text was Revelation chapter 3. Uh, and at verse number 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee, because, listen to this, thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. John Clark had read his text, was about to preach from that when the authorities busted into the home. And they arrested John Clark, Obadiah Holmes, and John Crandall, and they hauled them off, and they made them go into the Anglican church. And when they, when they, they told them, said, we'll not partake, we'll not partake of your table, we'll not be a part of it, and, and uh, they went in and, and sat down, and, and, uh, and they said to, uh, to the three prisoners, they said, remove your hats in church. They said, when we are in church, we do remove our hats. Amen. Their hats were still on their heads. Amen. You understand the message? This ain't a church is what they were saying Amen. Uh, way back then. And so they, they got the hats knocked off their heads. And they put them in, in, the, in the jail. And, uh, and they find uh, John Crandall, I believe it was five pounds, and, uh, and John Clark, ten pounds, and Obadiah Holmes, thirty pounds. Now, they're all doing the same thing. But see, they were really upset with Obadiah Holmes because Obadiah Holmes had been one of them and he had gotten saved. Not only did he gotten saved, but he was preaching. Not only was he preaching, he was now ordained and baptizing. Amen. And that really got in their crawl. Upset them. And so they were fine. Somebody paid John Clark's fine. Somebody paid a, a John Crandall's fine. And somebody offered to pay Obadiah Holmes and they said, you sign this paper. And he said, I will not sign it. And they kept him in jail all summer long. He's got a family of seven or eight children. They're back down in Rhode Island. This is summertime. Winter's coming. This is New England. You better get some crops in if you expect to survive. They weren't. This wasn't Jamestown. They're not practicing socialism. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. Amen. Right. Uh, and so they were. They, they had to do that. His family had to take care of things while he's in jail up there. And they told him, uh, and they, they said, okay, you're going to be beaten with 30 lashes. 30 lashes is the same sentence that was given to a murderer, a rapist, those type of people. It was an attempt to kill him. Yep. And so they tied him up and ripped his shirt off, and they beat him with 30 lashes. Those who, re who saw it and recorded some of it said his blood filled his boots. They were those who were arrested because they cried out for it to stop. If you don't have done, uh, I don't know how many of you follow anything, but there's a fellow who posts Baptist history on Facebook every day. His name is Thomas Creasel, friend of mine. And he just recently posted the story of Henry Dunster. You should read about Henry Dunster. Henry Dunster was there that day. 
And, uh, and it caused him to go, why in the world would this man take this beating? And he started studying in the Bible, uh, and he started studying on infant baptism. And that's a whole other story. You go read it and find out how it goes. And so uh, uh, anyway, uh, they beat him with 30 lashes. And when they cut him loose from the whipping post, Obadiah Holmes said, the Lord hath made it easy for me. You have beaten me as with roses. For weeks he couldn't lay down. He slept on his hands and knees. The wounds would stick to the sheets. The doctor that cared for him was arrested. But Obadiah Holmes' testimony not only impacted Henry Dunster, there are multiple people who were impacted by that. The first Baptist church that was ever established in Boston, Massachusetts has roots that go back to Obadiah Holmes beaten. Henry Dunster, of course, he goes back to it. Obadiah Holmes became the pastor after John Clark died. And you will, we'll maybe look at it later on and trace the lineage that comes through Obadiah Holmes and how God gave us liberty in America. And Obadiah Holmes beaten had a big part of it because some things were written as a result of that. Ill news from New England. Look that up. You can find it online. That was written about that beaten, sent back, what was going on in the colonies. Well, brother, I'll pause it there and we'll, uh, if I don't, I won't never know when to stop.